the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 163, 1 Kings 20-22 Jezebel, the follower of Baal, abusing the rose to murder Naboth. Ahab, who made it a rule to the evil, such as taking Naboth's vineyard by force, was killed in the battle with Aram, as prophesied by Micaiah. First point, Ahab failed to realize that it was God who helped them win against Aram. At the time, Benadad, king of Aram, mustered his army accompanied by 32 kings, their horses and chariots, and they went to besiege Samaria. When Ahab tried to strengthen his army through relations with Sidon and Tyre, Benadad tried to stop this. His father, Ben-Hadad I, had made a treaty between Aram and North Israel. But due to the request of South Judah's King Asa, the treaty with North Israel was broken, and they attacked North Israel instead. Therefore, the people inside Samaria devised various plans. The elders of North Israel, as well as the people, all claimed that they would not listen to the request or conditions of Ben-Hadad. Ben-Hadad therefore claimed that he would seize Samaria, break their walls, and make the people inside Samaria fear. At this, Ahab decided to proactively respond rather than surrender. When Ben-Hadad heard this, he ordered for the attack to begin. So the battle began, but God sent a prophet to tell them that those Israel would win this war. With God's help, those Israel was able to win with their seven thousands against the hundred thousands of Aram. Aram attacked again the following year, but with God's help once more, North Israel was victorious. Overnight, Aram lost 100,000 soldiers, and the remaining 27,000 also died, similarly to when Jericho collapsed. But when the war ended, Ahab met with ben and saved him. In exchange for saving his life, Ahab made ben return the castles of North Israel that he had taken and also made a deal on trade. God's command was to kill ben but Ahab did not listen and instead made a treaty with him. Second point, Jezebel framed Naboth who kept the rose regarding land in a kingdom of priests and then killed him. After winning the war against Aram through God's help, instead of strengthening a kingdom of priests, Ahab instead killed Naboth, who tried his best to keep the laws of a kingdom of priests. Jezebel was a worshiper of the Baal, so she abused the laws of a kingdom of priests and killed Naboth. This concerned Naboth's vineyard. Through the instant of Naboth's vineyard, we can see just how perverted and terrible this age was. The legal procedures concerning Naboth's vineyard was as follows. First, Ahab coveted Naboth's vineyard, but this was illegal according to the laws of the kingdom of priests. Second, as Naboth followed in God's laws, he rejected the king's offer. Third, in order to take the vineyard, Jezebel started to scheme and falsely accused him. Fourth, her method was to buy the judges, such as village elders and the royals. Fifth, she hired two men to make false accusations. 
This was to abuse the laws and then provide a reason to kill. Such laws existed back in Leviticus. Anyone who blasphemes the name of the Lord is to be put to death. The entire assembly must stone them. Whether foreigner or native born, when they blaspheme the name, they are to be put to death. Six, she made the judge put Naboth to death and make the vineyard her property. And in order to make sure no one would claim it, she killed Naboth's descendants. Third point, Ezekiel sent the prophet Nathan to David after the instance of Uriah. God sent the prophet Elijah to Ahab after the instance of Naboth. When David wrongly killed Uriah, God clearly told him how he would be punished. To Ahab, who wrongly killed Naboth, God sent the prophet Elijah to tell him the following. First, God told him of his faults and said that he would be punished. Second, God also proclaimed punishment upon Zezbel. When Ahab heard this, for a brief while, he repented before God. When God saw this, he was pleased. Have you noticed how Ab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself, I will not bring this disaster in his day, but I will bring it on his house in the days of his son. Ahab was the worst king out of all the kings of North Israel. But when he repented to God, God was pleased and deferred the punishment. As such, God wants to forgive humans more than we can ever know. Fourth point, Ahab died from getting hit by a mistaken arrow whilst fighting against Aram. The battle between North Israel and Aram resumed. North Israel was the first to attack this time. The reason they attacked was because Benadad had not kept to his side of the treaty. So North Israel made a treaty with South Judah and started a war with Aram. Before the war, South Judah's king Jehoshaphat proposed to Ahab to first ask God what they were to do. And so Ahab asked 400 prophets to ask God of his will. But here, Zedekiah and most of the prophets gave a false report. Disregarding God's will, they reported that Ahab would win. And so Ahab gained confidence from his treat with Jehoshaphat and the report from his 400 prophets and prepared for. But the prophet Micaiah proclaimed that Ahab should not start this war and that it was against God. However, much like Jeremiah, Micaiah was abused for telling the truth. Interestingly, Ahab must have been slightly nervous because he made Jehoshaphat the leader of the army and he himself dressed like a soldier and went to fight. But coincidentally, an arrow pulled by an armed soldier shot Ahab and killed him. As for Jehoshaphat, God saved him in this fight and so he was able to leave. But Ahab and Micaiah and Elijah had forewarned, died during battle. Fifth point, the fourth king of South Judah, Jehoshaphat, followed in the way of David and tried to turn people towards God. The Bible records two evaluations on Jehoshaphat. The positive report was as follows. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he followed the ways of his father David before him. He did not consult the Baals, but sought the gods of his father, and followed his commands rather than the practices of Israel. But he also received a negative. Like his father, he did not get rid of the idol temples completely. He also did not ask God about making a treaty with North Israel before doing so. 
in everything he followed the ways of his father Asa and did not stray from them. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. The high places, however, were not removed. And the people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. He also brought in Ahab's daughter and his daughter-in-law, which opened South Judah for more idol worship. Although Jehoshaphat had such flaws, he was evaluated to have followed in the way of David. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondok app. The Tondok app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyango Zo has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zo is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondok app.